Hi guys, welcome back to Behind the Sawdust, our weekly-ish vlog that talks about what goes on when the cameras are off here at the Stumpy Doves Woodworking Journal shops. We had so much fun with the Q&A episode last month that I think we're going to do it again. I've been collecting your questions about all sorts of subjects and now I'm ready to give you some answers. <laughs> this isn't a question as much as a comment that we get from time to time, mostly on these vlogs, and I always answer it the same way. It's a vlog. It's supposed to be talking. Don't like vlogs? Great. But you can't judge an entire woodworking channel based on one type of video. That'd be like saying, I hate McDonald's because all I have is Big Macs. You're going to miss out on the delicious fries. Recently, a guy who was obviously a real genius commented on one of our vlog videos, which incidentally happened to be about woodworking tools. But he said, you never make any woodworking videos anymore. In the last year, we've produced 108 videos. That's more than twice what any of the other big channels are doing. Only 22 of them have been vlogs. That means that 80% of the videos we made were projects, tutorials, tips, and other woodworking related content. Someone here suggested that the comment may have meant that we don't produce project videos like all the other channels do. But that's not true either, because we produced 40 project videos this last year. Now granted, we haven't done a lot of non-jig related projects in the last couple of months, but I think that's a good thing. YouTube is now full of woodworking channels that do these little five minute project videos every week. They've got that stuff covered. What we try to do through our channel and through Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal e-magazine is to teach new skills, provide tips and a lot of homemade jigs and tools to help you become a better woodworker that may not appeal to as many casual viewers as the crafty projects do, but we're targeting a different kind of audience. Ours is a more dedicated woodworking audience, not a DIY or maker audience, which is what drives the big numbers on other channels. I admit that this has made our channel grow more slowly than others, but I'm a woodworker. I'm not really a DIYer or a mixed media maker. I'm gonna produce the kind of content I'm comfortable with, not just what I know will drive the numbers. But to get back to that original question, our vlogs do contain a lot of talking, as vlogs often do. But they're easy to skip if you don't like them, because they all have these nice green thumbnail images with a big number on them. In fact, all of our video types are color-coded by thumbnail. Vlogs are green, projects are red, jigs are dark brown, hand tool videos are light brown, scroll saw videos are orange, tips are yellow, tool reviews are blue. So it's easy to know what sort of content is going to be in the video before you click on it. Now, what about those french fries? <laughs> How do you know I haven't made Mustache Mike the better person? Why does everyone assume that I'm the one that needs the attitude adjustment? Is it because of that genius remark in the last answer? Well, as most of you know from the last Q&A video we did, Mustache Mike is my dad. And I think most fathers make their sons better people. We didn't have a lot of money at times when I was a kid, and my mother was not a great person, especially to me and, or to him. But he worked really hard to take care of us and instill good values. Uh, he taught me how to run my own business and set me up with my first accounts in a residential window cleaning business back when I was just 16 years old, which turned out to be great for me because it gave me the freedom over the years to do a lot of the things that I wanted, including pursuing woodworking on the side, which eventually transitioned into a full-time career. If he hadn't taught me to run my own business when I was a kid, there's no way I'd be doing what I'm doing today. I'd be working in some crappy job for someone else, dreaming about woodworking someday if I retire. Instead, I'm living the dream. Has that made me a better person? No, I'm still a moron, but it has made me a happier person. We touched on this one in the last Q&A video, but that was an answer to a different question about the origin of the Stumpy Nubs nickname. So we'll cover this part again. We haven't officially stopped using the Stumpy Nubs name. We still use it all the time. People still call me Stumpy at public events. I'm totally cool with that. But when I started writing, the magazines and my book publisher preferred James Hamilton. And at some public events like Woodworking in America, they also promote it as James Hamilton. So now I have one group that knows me as Stumpy Nubs and another as James Hamilton. The easiest way to fix that was to combine the two by starting to use my real name at the beginning of videos while keeping the Stumpy Nubs brand at the same time. So the e-magazine is still gonna be called Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. 
The YouTube channel is still listed as Stumpy Nubs. Over the next couple of years, Popular Woodworking is going to be releasing a series of Stumpy Nubs guidebooks to certain tools. So you can see a lot of Stumpy Nubs on everything we do. And I'm happy to answer to it. By saying James Hamilton at the beginning of our videos, I'm not making an official change. It's more of an addition of my personal name to the Stumpy Nubs name for the sake of avoiding confusion among different parts of the audience. Now this is a loaded question if I ever saw one. If I only name three people, then people will say that means that I don't like other people. So I'm not going to mention just three, but I will tell you some of my favorite woodworking related channels. I like to watch videos that are really well produced. To me, a well produced video is more appealing than the actual content in it. I know that may sound strange, but I watch YouTube for entertainment as much as for information. So I like the channels that produce a really cinematic style. Uh, the Darwin Rivera channel is one of my favorites for that reason. Lynn's camera work makes every scene interesting to me. I love how she uses depth of field and rack focusing and her cheerful narration, especially the way she ends each video by saying that she likes how the project came out or what she likes about it. That just makes for good watching in my book. I also like Frank Howarth. Uh, you can tell that he puts a lot of thought into each video. He tells a story that really holds your attention and he often puts a lot of time into his editing, such as when he uses stop motion animation, which I love when he uses that. He also puts a lot of effort into placing the camera in the perfect place to give an interesting perspective of the work that's going on in each scene. Oh, and I like his voice. Very soothing. Another of my favorites is Laura Comp for the same reason as the other two. She does a lot of work with materials other than wood, but I love how she also tells a story as she works, often without even talking at all. And I especially lo love the way she uses music and how she carefully choreographs the video clips to synchronize with the music. Of course, not everyone watches woodworking videos for the cinematic experience. Sometimes we do it for the personalities. So some of my favorite personalities are Steve Carmichael and Nick Ferry, because they're just, I don't know, the sort of guys that would be fun to hang out with. I think that comes across in their videos. They always seem happy and sometimes goofy, especially Steve, and I love that. Uh, I like April Wilkerson because I do know her and she's a lot of fun, but she's also very smart. Anyone that says that she's just popular on YouTube because she's one of the very few women in online woodworking obviously has never met her. She knows exactly what she's doing and it's no accident that she's built a really successful channel. Jay Bates has always been nice to me too. I've been watching his channel from the beginning. He does a lot of workshop related content, which appeals to me more than the other projects that a lot of other channels do. Oh, and Lainey Shaughnessy is one of the nicest guys on YouTube. He will do anything for you. I don't watch many of his videos, mostly because he's so busy doing stuff for other people, so he doesn't seem to have time to make a lot of videos these days. Another really nice guy is Drew Short. I love when he includes his family in his videos, and I like to call him Dr. Drew because he looks like a TV doctor. And I think he works in radiology. I think he told me that one time. Uh, there are a lot of other great channels out there, but those are just the ones that came to mind. Funny story about another YouTube woodworker. At Woodworking in America this past year, I had just finished teaching a long two-hour class, and I just had a little bit of time before I had to do another two-hour class. So I walked over into the public part of the building where the marketplace was. I don't usually spend a lot of time during those sessions in the marketplace because when you're a speaker at Woodworking in America, people see the green speaker thing on your name tag and they stop you because they think you must be important. And then when they inevitably see that I'm not important, it gets awkward. And I have to tell them, no, I will not get you Chris Schwartz autograph or a couple of Roy Underhill's mustache hairs. Anyway, while I like to meet fans, the conference can be exhausting. And on this day, I was really exhausted. So I'm leaving the marketplace to go back to get the next class ready. And this guy in a bright orange shirt stops me. So I say hello and everything. And he starts telling me about building a drum sander that I designed. And I guess he was having a problem uh, but I admit it made zero sense to me at the moment. I had no idea what he was talking about. But it sounded like he'd gotten it solved. So I'm smiling and nodding and inching away, but he's sort of walking along with me, telling me something about how he had bought plans for my website twice, or maybe he had bought the plans and then one of my books. And anyway, it sounded like he ended up spending $10 more than he had to. At least that's what I thought he meant. Like I said, I was having a rough day. He may have, you know, it may have been a perfectly valid point, but I didn't know what to say. Uh, did you want me to give him 10 bucks? I didn't even know if I had 10 bucks. So 
and it could have been a whole misunderstanding. Like I said, I didn't know what was going on. It could have been just some guy asking me where the bathroom was. But anyway, I just said, I'm sorry, and I tried to slip past him, and he said, you should be. <laughs> now, I'm a fun and fancy free guy, as you all know. I don't lose my temper easily, but there was just something about that that just got me the wrong way. And so I got upset, and I said a few choice words to him, and I again tried to walk away. But as it turned out, we both were going the same direction, up a hallway which makes it difficult to do that dramatic storming off like you want to do when at the end of an argument. So we continued this awkward walking half argument up the hallway until he turned to go into the bathroom where he was heading and I turned a corner in the opposite direction and went to the other part of the conference center. So I get back to my classroom and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I was a jerk to this guy. I mean, it's not his fault I'm having a bad day. You know, I, he's got a, a legitimate problem, and here I'm not just blowing him off, but I'm telling him off. So I'm thinking that doesn't properly represent me. It certainly doesn't represent Popular Woodworking Magazine or the Woodworking in America Conference, so I just can't let this stand. So I head back, all the way back to the uh, marketplace area, and I can't find him anywhere. Then out of the corner of my eye, I see that bright orange shirt. It's a good thing he's wearing the bright orange shirt. But he's heading down the escalator to, towards the exit. So I'm rushing towards the escalator, knocking people over, and I slide down the banister like in the cartoons. Well, maybe not really, but you get the point. I chased after him. I finally caught him just before he was going to leave, and I stopped him and I said I was sorry that I had been a jerk, that you know it was no right. I had no right to take my bad day out on him and to not listen to his legitimate problem that he was trying to tell me about. I will, I'm not afraid to admit I'm a jerk when I'm a jerk. So we shook hands and everything went great and he left. Now this is where it gets interesting. A couple of months later, I'm negotiating a new contract with one of my sponsors. Now this is our second sponsor. We've had this sponsor for years and they've always worked just exclusively with us. But while we're talking, the sponsor says something about they had done a project with another YouTube woodworker. and. I didn't really think much of it other than it was pretty clear. I thought that they were kind of dropping that bit of information to get some leverage in the negotiation. But whatever, I, we worked out the deal. I got a new contract and then afterwards I go on YouTube and I try to find this YouTube woodworker that had done a project with my sponsor. Even though they hadn't sponsored him, but they had worked on one project. So I find it and lo and behold, it is that same orange shirt from Woodworking in America. It's Tyler from the YouTube channel DIY Tyler. At least I'm pretty sure this is the same guy. I had never seen the channel before this, and but it, it looks like this is the same guy. So probably without even knowing it, Tyler got a little bit of revenge because even though I did renew the contract with the sponsor, I even got a pretty good raise, still he played into the negotiation, gave them a little more leverage, which may have brought the price down a little bit. Who knows? So DIY Tyler, if you're out there and it is you, I hope hopefully it was you because I've now told this whole story and if it wasn't you, this is going to be really awkward, but I'm still sorry that I acted like a jerk to you and uh, call me, we'll hang out. But I thought that was the funniest thing. And you should check out uh, D the DIY Tyler channel on YouTube. I'll link to it in the notes below the video. Um, because he makes great videos. He does a lot of workshop related content, which I like, and I know a lot of the people that watch our channel would like that too. So check that out. That wraps things up for this Q&A edition of Behind the Sawdust. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below or contact us through our website using the contact Stumpy link, or you can leave them on Facebook or Twitter for us. Don't forget to support our sponsors who made it possible for us to produce over 100 free woodworking videos this past year. You can visit their websites at the links below this video. Just check them out and see what they have to offer. I consider it a personal favor. Next week, we'll do something different on Behind the Sawdust, so tune in to see what that'll be about. In the meantime, be sure to visit our website for the latest issue of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal. It's going to be full of tips, tricks, tutorials, and techniques to make you a better woodworker. You can read and subscribe for free at StumpyNubs.com. Then you can sit back and have yourself a cold one, because you've earned it, my friend.